It's time for the Moving the Chains podcast. Your home for high school football coverage in the Palmetto State. Every team, every game, every week. And now your host, Kevin Thomas and Jarrell Hendricks. Welcome into Moving the Change, brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. I'm Kevin Thomas alongside Jarrell Hendricks here for our week six recap show brought to you by Folly Road. Jarrell, maybe a first for the squad, but we had all three of us at different ball games on Friday night. I was down at Lake Mary and Jarrell, you were at Philip Simmons and then John was at South Lawrence, but three fun ball games, three good ball games. We'll recap here in a little bit, but another great crazy night in high school. Yeah, man, missed the boys for sure. Missed you guys at the game, uh, but I had my wife with me, so that was awesome. Uh, but it was good to get down to the Low Country. I know it's hard for us to to typically do that. Get down there, had a great crowd at Philip Simmons, uh, first class organization, and uh, the game did not live up to the hype because the Iron Horses were so good. Uh, but it was, a, like you said, a wild week of football. Seeing a little movement. All these games are starting to matter. We're in region play now, so it's a lot of fun and uh, looking forward to recapping it. Well, if you guys tune in for the first time, we appreciate you. Check us out on all social media at Moving Chains, M-O-V-I-N-C-H-A-I-N-S, movingchains.com is our website, our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. We do a weekly recap show. comes out on those podcast platforms on Sunday. We do a weekly preview show live on Facebook and YouTube on Tuesday nights about 7 o'clock. Tune in for that. Then we do uh, Friday Night Spaces, which is like the scoreboard show on Twitter. Lots of great interviews and things like that as well coming down the pipe for you guys. But before we break down the games that we were at, let's get a quick word to the friends of the program. Take your financial game to the next level with Founders Federal Credit Union. Reach your full potential. Relax. Join Founders today. Visit an office near you or relaxjoinfounders.com to apply. Federally insured by NCUA member qualification required. Come for the deals and stay for the quality with Folly Row. From polos to Q-zips to hats and more, their moisture-wicking, quick-drying, and anti-wrinkle apparel is the perfect blend of comfort and fashion for game day. Follyrow.com and at Folly Row on social media. Folly Row, very good polos. I'll go first here, Jarrell, because my game probably won't take quite as long as <laughs> yours. Uh, I was down at Lake Marion High School, David Longshore Junior Stadium, to see the Lake Marion Gators hosting the Oceanside Collegiate Land Sharks. Oceanside scored early in the game, 10.05 left in the first quarter, actually. Touchdown run by Trey Brown on their opening drive. They go up 7-0 right out of the gate. Not much action there the rest of the quarter. We do get a field goal from Nate Sturm to make it 10-0, and that score holds for the end of the first quarter. Oceanside scores again, second quarter, late second quarter, actually. 31-yard touchdown pass from Will Virgilio to Logan Hamilton. They go up 17-0, 29 seconds left, second quarter. And that is the halftime score, 17 to nothing. About midway through the third quarter, we had a 22-yard touchdown pass from Edward Reidenbach to C.J. Moscos so on fourth and 10. Oceanside went up 24-0, 7.53 left in the third. Another touchdown pass, Reidenbach to Moscos, three yards, extra point, no good. They got 30 to nothing, 4-4 left in the third quarter. That's the score at the end of the third. Lake Marion actually does mount a late drive. A 10-yard touchdown pass from Javion Jameson to Mace, uh, Miles to end the shutout. Two-point pass is good. They make it 30-8 to eight there, three minutes left. And that is the final score. The Oceanside Collegiate Land Sharks defeat the Lake Marion Gators 30-8. to eight. You know, Jarrell, it was a game that was controlled, I would say, by Oceanside the whole way. Um, you could just yeah. tell they were more talented, more physical. Uh, and, and it was a pretty easy win for them. You feel like they didn't play their best, were a little bit vanilla, but didn't have to do much. You know, it's, it's one of those games where – I guess you go in knowing you're the better team. You just want to like, as long as you don't turn it over or do something dumb, you're going to get the win. And that's kind of what it felt like. But great win for Coach Wilkes' squad. I mean, the boys, you know, a big bounce back after a tough loss to Sumter. Um, nice to get get back in the win column there. And, I mean, they are clearly the favorite in that region. Going to be one of the favorites in lower state 2A all year long. But they were impressive, man. Uh, that was my first time laying eyes on those guys. The state championship runner-ups last year, I saw them. This team I don't think is quite as good right now as that squad was. They've got some talent, got some potential there. They will be getting better as the season goes long, Drill. But it's a final there. Oceanside Collegiate knocks off Lake Marion 30-8 to eight on the road in week six. Yeah, so I was actually down um, in the Charleston area. 
I guess it's technically the town's called Wando uh, to take on Phillip Simmons and Buford. Uh, Phillip Simmons hosted this game. They call their stadium. It's new. It's called the Phil. So that's cool to see there. Uh, but, you know, I also saw a team that was in last year's state championship. Um, they were actually the 3A state champions, and they do not look like the same team uh, that we saw last fall uh, because Phillip Simmons, man, just dominated this football game. It started off pretty, pretty early. Philip Simmons received the opening kickoff. It was a short kick by design. Uh, but Philip Simmons just just runs it down, you know, Buford's throats here. I mean, it was capped off by a one-yard touchdown run from KJ Asbury, um, giving the Iron Horses a 7-0 lead um, with about five minutes left in the first quarter. Uh, let's see. Scrolling down through our feed, the quarter ended at 7-0. Uh, these are two teams that like to run the football. Uh, so this game went by pretty fast. If it was not on TV, um, it would have been over uh, very quickly. Uh, but the next one that I had um, into the second quarter early on, you know, after Samari Bonds fumble from Buford, the quarterback there, uh, KJ Asbury takes it in on the 36 yard touchdown run. Uh, they went for two on that play, uh, but it ended up being 13 0 with 11 05 left in that second quarter. Um, we keep going throughout the quarter. Uh, that Phillip Simmons defense just continued to bow their necks. They get the ball back. Then we saw a 45 yard touchdown pass from. Aureliana, the quarterback there to Troy Stevenson, beautiful wheel route on that play, extended this lead to 20 to nothing over Buford with four minutes left in the second quarter. Kind of slowed down from there until the end of the half, and then there was a 23-yard field goal by Sam Crocker to extend that lead going in to halftime, and that was the halftime score, 23 nothing. Looked like Buford was all but dead at that moment in time, uh, but they get a big play to kick off the second half, uh, being an 80-yard touchdown run by Jaden Andrews. Uh, they go for two on the play, do not get it. It's 23 to six there, you know, just 15 seconds into the third quarter. I think Buford's going to be able to get something going here. Just didn't happen. I mean, Phillip Simmons. They're able to, to drive deep in the Buford territory, take a lot of time off the clock, go for it on fourth down. They come up short. Buford does the exact same thing when they get the ball, drive the ball deep um, into Phillip Simmons' territory, go for it on fourth down in the red zone. I think it was at the 15-yard line or so. Um, and then they get stopped. Um, and that basically was all that happened in the third quarter. That's just how, how it went there. Um, but early um, in the fourth quarter, uh, you know, K.J. Asbury just keeps doing what he's doing, has a 24-yard touchdown run. Uh, they go for the extra point, go for two again. Um, it is stopped. It ended up being 29-6 to six at that point in the fourth quarter. Um, then, shortly after that, on the next possession, Buford, I think they went three and out. Punt was blocked um, in the end zone and recovered. Um, so that made the final scoreline 36-6. to six. Uh you know, nothing really happened after that particular play. Kind of just ran the ball both ways. 36-6 to final. Kevin, talking about this Iron Horses squad, man, they run like a double wing set. <laughs> it's basically like an old school double wing offense out of the shotgun. Uh, you know what's coming. It's a lot of jet sweeps, you know, a lot of, you know, trap plays, um, you know, some dives, things like that with the back in the backfield. Um, they're seeing – and they're just running the ball between those big backs and, and Asbury and Williams. Man, they're very physical, but they're also fast, got a little wiggle. I know you saw some highlights of them, you know, performing there. Uh, but they just tote the rock. That's all they do. I think they threw the ball maybe 10 times this game, um, only when they had to. But they were effective when they had to throw the ball. You know, it was a lot of waggle concepts, a lot of crossers and things like that. Hit that big play to Troy Stevenson. He plays offense as well. So when you know he's coming out on the field, that's why I like these, you know, 3A and lower classifications. You have these studs who play two ways. You know they're going to get the football and you still can't stop them. Uh, but they completely shut down Buford in all facets of the game. You know, slowed down their running attack. The passing attack for Buford was non existent. Uh, Phillip Simmons was actually the more disciplined team in this football game. You know, they didn't commit many penalties, they were cleaner. Uh, but yeah, it was just it was thorough, like a thorough domination. They were good in all three phases of the game. Buford has a little bit to work on. I know they just lost so much from that team last year, especially with Ferris and Fields. Uh, but Phillip Simmons is a real deal. They win this football game. They have their bye week this week. I think they're seven and zero. I think we talked about it in the spaces. This is a program defining win for the that Phillip Simmons team, and uh, really excited to see what they got going on for the rest of the season. And what was crazy to me, or I guess interesting to me, Jarrell, is we were getting updates the night from you about that ball game. Like we knew that Philip Simmons could run the ball. 
They have some dy- dynamic backs there, but the way their defense played, I mean, to, to hold yeah. Buford to just one long touchdown run, like no, you know, really sustained long scoring drives there, that was really impressive to me. You know, that that seemed like a championship level defensive performance as well for Coach Bendix's squad there. Yeah, it was just a bust, you know. Like like I said, it was 15 seconds in. It was the first play after, you know, the the end of the half there, um, the 80 yarder that just popped. But outside of that, I mean, there was really no big explosive plays. Like anything that Buford was doing, like it was, you know, a lot of the times it's kind of like watching Clemson's offense the first few weeks of the season. It seemed like extremely difficult for Buford to get anything going because that Philip Simmons defense was so good. And so fundamentally sound. Like I said, passing game was non-existent. Samari Bonds did not have his best game. Uh, you know, I think they hit a couple throws late. Um, but it was a situation where Phillip Simmons just completely and thoroughly dominated this game in all three phases. They're a legitimate state championship contender down there. Um, it's going to be a tough out for them in the in the 3A playoffs. I think Buford's fine. I think they'll be okay. They'll figure some stuff out. Um, you know, Coach Lybrand's one of the best, obviously a state champion. Really appreciate him. I got to chat with him about 10 minutes, you know, before the game, talking about his team and, and his season. And um, just really appreciate his time. You know, he's joined us before. Uh, also, Coach Ben Dig, man, they were extremely gracious down there. Speaking with him was awesome before the game and after the game. Uh, but, yeah, these are two good teams. I wouldn't sleep on Buford the rest of the way, but they are not as good as they were last year, obviously. But Phillip Simmons, I feel like, is the real deal. And Jarrell caught up with Coach Bendig after the ball game there and the big win. And we're going to put the interview here in just a second. But big win for Phillip Simmons. Let's put that interview in here now, and then we'll wrap up our games we were at this week. Jarrell Hendricks here with head coach Eric Bendig. It's Phillip Simmons' iron horses. They knock off the Buford Eagles 36-6 to to kick off region play. Coach, that's a dominating victory. What did you see this week to know that your team was motivated and was going to come out with a, a big victory? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, hats off to the kids and the coaching staff. They put an unbelievable plan together. Um, we knew it was a great team. I mean, there's no hiding that. Um, the one thing that I thought we saw that we could do is, is run the ball and maybe control a little bit of time. Um, and we've been able to do that all year. Uh, hopefully that continues. Um, our defense stepped up, you know, a lot. We thought we might be in a little bit more of a slugfest. Um, but they did such a great job. And the coaches and players responded to a little bit of adversity there after the half. And, you know, I just they just put in the work this week. It was a great week of practice. Talk about your defense a little bit for me. I mean, outside of that 80-yard touchdown, you know, to kick off the third quarter, they were lights out. Um, you know, what did you see, you know, on that side to know that you were going to be able to, to stop these guys? You know, we had a great pregame speech from, uh, you know, Coach Reedy, uh, Chuck Reedy, a legend, but he's a great friend of mine, a great mentor. And he basically summed it up, and it was like we were going to have to be physical. Um, to play deep in the playoffs and, and win championships and things like that, you have to be physical. And those guys up front were unbelievably physical, um, played with a lot of heart, uh, but played in their scheme. And, and, and we talk about unselfish football. Not everybody's going to get to make a tackle. Got to take on a double team. And I saw a lot of our defensive linemen really eating up blocks, allowing our linebackers to make plays. Uh, guys, you know, bend but don't break, letting some big plays happen. Uh, but you know, coming right back out there and making a stop. So, uh, I mean, they just stepped up. You know, minus that one play. I mean, it was such a great night for them. This is the win that's going to reverberate. Talking about kicking off the region play here with the win, you know, setting, you know, setting the tone, you know, for a region championship and knocking out the defending state champions there. You know, what do you say to, to fans, media, and your community, you know, after a big win like this? You know, I, you know, you know, we start this year. You know, I, I told our guys I, I'd love to be where expectations are high. I want to play in these types of games. So we want to be able to compete with the best in the state, and Buford's definitely one of those. They've proved it. They played 30 games over the last two years, uh, and they come into this year with, you know, a great record against, you know, great 5A teams. Um, so I know what we have in that locker room. I know what we have in this coaching staff, and I know what we have uh, special right now. Um, and, I, you know, we're fun to watch. Uh, you know, I, I, all, I, all I can say is, you know, I'm just proud to be the head coach of Phillip Simmons and, and this group right here. Again, Coach Eric Bendig, his Iron Horses win this game over Buford, 36-6. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you, man. All right, Kev, thanks again for Coach Bendig there for joining us um, after the game. Like I said before the game as well, they were gracious hosts down there. Final on that football game was 36-6. to Iron Horses take down the Eagles. Um, that was one of our Kona games of the week. Uh, we thank our friends at Kona each week for sponsoring these games. But the next one was the game that John was at, and that was South Florence at Hartsville. You know, we were getting those updates from John throughout the night. Hartsville and, and South Florence were going back and forth in this ball game. Uh, but South Florence, man, that defense just proves to be too tough. They went at 49 to 21, you know, going away, having a big second half. Um, you know, the Bruins winning in a different way than they did last year, but still winning football games. 
they're impressive, man. That defense is just lights out. We got so many studs with Harkless and Rhodes and Adams and Goodman and just name it, name it, name it. Uh, you know, Camonte Rhodes as well uh, out there just, just making plays. Had their sixth straight game with a defensive touchdown against the Red Foxes. I mean, that's pretty dang um, impressive there for them. Obviously, I do want to say prayers go out to, to Carmelo McDaniel there for Hartsville. I uh, know he was injured in the ball game, had to bring the stretcher out. Well, I did see today that he is going home from the hospital. I think it was maybe yesterday. So he is yeah. improving. It sounds like that's great. Um, you know, and hopefully he is back at hundred percent sooner rather than later there. You know, I, this is a game going into it drill that I think we all picked South Florence because we were kind of worried about the health of Hartsville with, with Douglas, yeah. especially and some other guys there. I know that he played was he hundred percent. I don't know. Um, and this game, it, it felt like South Florence kind of had control of it there in the second half. And then once the McDaniel, Daniel injury happened, I mean, that was it. I mean, and I understand, obviously, if you're a Hartsville kid, you see your, your teammate, you know, out on the field like that. St- tough to stay focused at that point. It kind of got away from a little bit more. But big win for South Florence. I mean, those guys are for real. They're, they're a, for sure a contender in 4A, if not the favorite uh, in, in lower state especially. Yeah, for sure. They got to be a favorite for Lower State. Obviously, they're in the driver's seat there in that region of the Bruins. Just, just one of the better teams um, that we've seen. One of the better programs. You know, like I, I want to define it that way. You know, this is a program at this point. You know, last year, you know, we we actually two years ago we saw him building. You know, with Lenora, he gets injured. Last year, you know, they go have a miracle season, dream season. I mean to say, and then this year they just follow back on that, just winning these consecutive games. Um, and winning in dominating fashion. And I want to echo those sentiments, you know, about Harshwell and Carmelo McDaniel, man. He's one of my favorite players um, that we've been able to cover these last few years. Uh, just one of the, you know, just a huge heart, runs hard, plays hard every play. Uh, just wish him a speedy recovery and I uh, hope he's able to get back on the field before long. But Kev, let's put a bow on that one and move on to our next game. Uh, it's up in Region 2 and. 5A, you know, one of the toughest, you know, we talk about them week in and week out, and we'll continue to do so as we progress through this season. Uh, but we had Burns facing off against Spartanburg. Two dynamic defenses, man. I mean, just two of the best defenses in the state. Uh, we just, the difference in this football game was one defense was able to get in the end zone a couple times, and we had the Burns Rebels winning it 21 to 9. I mean, these are two legitimate top five teams in 5A, Kev. I believe Armani Weaver uh, scoop and score on, on, for the one touchdown, and then James Oates big return on, on a pick six there for the Rebels. Their defense has just been lights out all year long, man. You know, even the game they lost to Chapman, they gave up seventeen points. I think it was so they've been dominant. It feels like the offense doing just enough. I, th- I think Coach Shaw has realized the defense is what's leading that team, especially offensively. Don't turn it over. You know, you'll bust a big player too with Segura or, or Bomar or whoever or on offense there. But the defense is their calling car right now. They're playing to that strength, and the Rebels are looking looking the part of a, of a you know state title contender, really. Yeah, just going to the other side too. I mean, you can't discount Spartanburg too. I know they've had their struggles with the offense. It's picked up, you know, with some lesser opponents the last few weeks. Uh, but on their end, they give up seven points. I think it was a long run from Segura that was early in the game, and you know they're in that ball game. They just. I think they had some turnovers on the offensive side. Obviously, they had some turnovers on the offensive Believe side. Four, I think, in total. Yeah, and and that's the difference in the football game. I mean, their defense played more than well enough for them to win this football game. They have just got to figure out what's going on the offensive side, and they're going to be extremely dangerous. I mean, and, you know, they're playing on the road at Nixon Field for this game. The Vikings are legitimate, but Burns did what they had to do to, to get the win. Can't say enough about that Burns defense, man. They are fantastic. And, you know, when they're able to, to score points as well, I mean, they're just going to be unbeatable. Uh, but, Kevin, uh, uh, the next game we had was also in the upset, upstate, and that was Westside and Greenville. Westside just controlled this game throughout. They win it 28-14. to 14. It was 21-7 at the half. Uh, Westside, you know, they got the passing combo – you know, with Jamar Boston and Josh Williams and Cutter Woods at quarterback. They also got a pretty dynamic running back in DeMarco Evans, who was able to, you know, get in the end zone a few times for them. That is an impressive region opening victory for Westside there. And I'll be on- honest with you, you know, I hadn't heard much about Evans. You know, I'd heard of Sherody Richardson, who had been kind of carrying load, it felt like early in the year. But Evans, a big breakout game here uh, in week six. I mean, that's a huge performance to, to kind of get a, a complimentary ground game there to what Woods and those guys can do through the air. And hats off to that Westside defense as well. Holding Greenville 
who's got some big time playmakers to 14 points. That's very impressive. Huge win. You know, Serene Stadium, not an easy place to play there. Westside has looked really good since that week one loss to BHP, while Greenville, on the other hand, they may have some issues they got to figure out, Drill. I think they definitely have some issues that they need to figure out. I mean, they were one of the hyped up teams coming into the season, and they just, you know, they play one of the most difficult non region schedules by design because that region is not very difficult. Um, this was the game, you know, the one that they had circled. I mean, they scored, what, 70 points in this football game last year? And, yeah, you know, I think. I think the only difference is you lose Tyler Brown, who you know showed out on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, but then you go from seventy to your output is fourteen, and I think one of those was you know late in the football game. Uh, you know that's just a testament to this West Side defense, though. That is a complete football team. I think the Rams are legit. Kind of just maybe they stumbled, or maybe BHP is just that good in in Week One. Uh, but that is a huge win. That pretty much just sets them up to win that region. I don't think there's anybody else in that class. And what's so crazy to me, Joe, about this ball game, Westside allowed 42 last week to Greer. Yeah. Greenville was coming off of a bye, an extra week to prep for this ball game, and they got the ends on twice. Uh, yeah. so, something's wrong there. I don't know what it is, but that is a uh, that was a surprise to me. You know, I thought Westside had a good chance to win the game. I mean, I think I picked them on the show, but I was thinking – 42 35, you know, 35 31. Yeah. I was thinking high scoring affair there, but no, I mean, to hold those guys to two scores, that that's a big win for the Rams. If their defense plays like that the rest of the season, they might not be beaten. Yeah. And I think that's more of like a red flag for Greenville. You know, like you said, you know, West Side is known. Like that's been the concern is their defense. Uh, them playing that well. Like I didn't even put that together that Greenville had an off week to prepare for this football game and still put up a, only 14 points. I think they had some some costly turnovers um, in the second half of this game, but still, um, if you told me that Westside was only going to score 28 points against Greenville, you know, on Thursday, I was like, Greenville's going to win that game by two, three touchdowns. You know what I'm, I'm thinking there? But uh, hats off to Westside, hats off to Coach Lane and, and those guys getting that big win. They're in the driver's seat in that region. That is huge. Probably going to lock up that number one seed. Uh, but going to the PD, Kev, uh, you know, we had a red hot ladder team going into Lamar. Low scoring football game here. Lamar is able to win it 14 to seven. You know, you had the up and comer, you know, looking to dethrone those those top two teams in that region. And Latta just wasn't ready for the big time. Unfortunately, Lamar, you know, it was. 8-0 at the half. I think they scored late on, on a special teams play. Um, you know, but the Silver Foxes, man, they, they just get it done. Lamar is still Lamar. I mean, we talk about every year. They have so many athletes there. Like, you know, we talked to Coach Burris uh, in a new coach's interview this offseason, and he was telling us, like, you know, so many kids here grow up with dads, uncles, cousins, whatever, who've won state titles. They want to be the next ones, and, and, and they've got the playmakers to do it. I think I said it on the show Tuesday. Looking for a big game out of Tavis Stalford. He had a big touchdown for them early in the game there. They go up 8-0. I believe Latta gets a stop late. Lamar punts to them. The punt is muffed, and I think the Silver Fox is taken in uh, for that last touchdown there and the big win. You know, I, I haven't heard a ton about this game. I, I didn't see a lot of coverage. So I'm not sure how many chances Latta had. I don't know, but that's a big win for Lamar. I mean, they're a different team. Last couple weeks, last couple weeks was Zori Pierce being back there at quarterback after his injury. Those guys are legit, man. You know, you can't let their record fool you. We talked about it. They played Dillon already. They played Airport already. They played, uh, I think, Andrew Jackson, like a lot of bigger schools. So, no shame in them losing a few ball games, And they're going to be right there in the 1A ranks for sure. Yeah, I think that's the quote of the night, man. Lamar is still Lamar, and they, they proved it on Friday night. You know, obviously, that's going to set up a, a big-time matchup. Lamar's going to play Lakeview later in the season. Interested to see how Ladder responds, you know, going in the game 6-0. and You know, how do they respond to the success and then having a heartbreaking loss like this, you know, when they have all that momentum. Uh, but hopefully the Vikings get it figured out. Uh, but that was a, a big-time ball game down there in the PD. But moving on to our Skiza game of the week, uh, wasn't much of a game. <laughs> we had Hamma rolling over Augusta Christian, 42-10. to Hammond's still Hammond, right? Yeah, exactly. I was going to say the same quote, man. Uh, they're getting better. They're getting older. You know, they had a bunch of kids to replace from last year. They had, a, you know, some young guys playing for them right now. But they're getting the run game going. They're getting the pass game going. You know, Coach Mangus' offense is starting to figure out a little bit there. But, uh, you know, I, I like Andrew Turner. I like Mike Tyler. I like Manny Johnson. The running back is a stud. The Johnson kid's really good. They're getting it figured out, uh, and, and they are still the class of 4A, we think. 
But this week, uh, big game against Cardinal Newman. So that that was really impressive, impressive to not kind of have a, a, a look-ahead spot there, I guess you could say, for the Skyhawks. But big win for those guys. Huge slate, you know, to, to really kick off region play. I know it started in a few other classifications, but to really get into region play, our Kona games of the week, we had Phillip Simmons knocking off Buford 36-6. South Florence defeats Hartsville 49 to 21. Burns in a defensive uh, slugfest wins 21 to 9. Westside goes into Serene and beats Greenville 28 to 14. Lamar Holden serve over Latta 14 to 7. And in our Skiza game of the week, we had Hammond all over Augusta Christian 42 to 10. Kevin, let's take a look at our Pick'em Contest games. Pick'em Contest is presented each week by Hannah Engineering. Really appreciate their support because, as you know, and I will say it for the 12th time, the Pick'em Contest is my favorite thing to do each week. Uh, but the first one we had was a, you know, a, a colossal matchup in the low country and that was Ford Dorchester and Ashley Ridge Ashley Ridge just white hot under coach Jeff Tate scoring a lot of points this year uh but 4D man 4D still 4D they win this game 40 to 22 this was a tight one in you know late in the second half 26 to 22 4D just flexes their muscles able to shut down Ashley Ridge still a big time performance from Derek Sally over on that side yeah he had a huge game for for the uh for those guys there at AR but Fort D had two backs over a buck fifty. Davian Brown and Ryan Smalls got it going on the ground. Charles Watson, a couple of nice starts. Those guys as well. Fort D is a good squad. I mean, you talked about it. I think we said it a few times already. Where I feel like they're kind of overlooked because of the coaching changes and whatnot. They still got athletes, man. They're going to be a tough out for anybody. Obviously, you start you know looking forward in line at that Fort Fort D Somerville game here um, at some point. But they're they're a good football team. AR is too. Coach Hayes doing a great job as well. But big win there for the Patriots. Back in the upstate in 3A, kind of a changing of the guard, changing of the guard, you know, back to the old guard, and that's BHP over Powdersville, 56-28. to 28. Uh, This game was tight early, uh, but the Bears and that ground attack, man, I think they racked up, you know, over, if not close, 300 yards on the ground. I think they only threw the ball, you know, eight times in this game. Um, they were able to shut down Powdersville really in that second half. I can't say enough about BHP, man. They are a fantastic football team. Yeah, they're very good. You know, Powdersville, I think we said uh, when we talked to Kane on Friday, had a couple defensive plays, kind of kept them in the ball game and gave them an early lead, really, in that one. But BHP, if they can just, you know, make sure they don't turn the ball over, they're going to win a lot of games because that run game is just unstoppable right now. Next game, we had Blackville Hilda against HKT. HKT previously unbeaten until Friday night. They lose to Blackfield Hill to 33 to 18. Man, Kev, this game was close. It was 13 to 12 at the end of the third quarter. I think it was like 13 7 at the half. Uh, but Blackfield Hill, the man, they just exploded in that fourth quarter, outscored HKT 20 to 6 in that quarter, kind of fell apart. Uh, you know, for them late. Uh, but Blackfield is a team that we've talked about, you know, early in this season. Um, and they continue to to impress. I like Coach Jones's Fighting Hawks squad a lot. I mean, they're getting it done. Jaquel Holman, really good running back there. He's putting up big numbers for those guys, and that's a big win. You know, they've played really, really tough one A team so far, and they've fared fairly well. And their one loss, uh, you know, by a point to Bamberg, but they've looked really impressive. Uh, I like what he's doing down there. Talking about a game that was not close, and that is White Knoll and River Bluff. White Knoll wins this game 40 to nothing. I mean, I think it was 30 nothing at the half, uh, 31 nothing at the half. White Knoll racks up close to 500 yards of total offense. Obviously, they shut out River Bluff on, you know, on their offensive side of the ball. I think Parker Murray had like 26 yards pass, and it was something crazy like this. Man, White Knoll's a team I know that you're high on, and they just, you know, kicked off their region play in a big way. Six and zero for those guys, uh, you know. And we think about their offense under Coach Pelham, of course. You know, then Landon Sharp there throwing the ball around. They got some studs around him, but the defense has played great too. Um, they've been a very good team uh, so far this season. Interested to see what happens when they get, you know, up, up against the Lexington and Dutch Fort. See just how good they are. But that's a heck of a way to start it. And, and then River Bluff on the flip side, they're kind of a hard team to figure out. You know, they got smoked by Irmo a few weeks back. Well, I believe they may have been shut out in that game too. Shut out again here in Week Six. But the, in between that, they kind of sandwiched a come from behind win over Dorman, which I mean, Dorman's not Dorman of old, but still that's a solid win, uh, especially late, you know, having to come from behind there. But I think they're down this year, and I think White Knoll is certainly up. Yeah, well, I mean, the Timberwolves, man, they got Banks and, and Kimball as well. I mean, this is a very solid football team. 
like I said, it's going to be we'll have to circle that game when they play Dutch Fork to see how good they really are. Uh, but that's an impressive win for those guys. And another impressive win, North Augusta. They destroy South Aiken, 63-21. to 21. South Aiken's defense regressing back to that mean after a big-time win last week. Um, all I need to say about this one is there was a running clock in the second half. And, uh, I mean, just an epic, epic beatdown. This game really blew open in the third quarter. I believe I saw the Yellow Jackets held uh, Terrence Smith to zero completions in the first half. I think I saw. Yeah, uh, yeah pretty, I saw that too. Pretty crazy. Uh, but yeah, tell you what. But on the flip side, the North Augusta's offense has really been playing well. Uh, Corey Tillman, a quarterback, getting it figured out. Michael Doe at running back. Beans Hunt is a playmaker there for those guys. Coach Bush has got those guys believing. That's a huge win for them. I mean, that, that's going to be a, a a tougher region, obviously, with Midland Valley being up, um, and you know, Airport being better as well. But that's a big win there to knock off South Aiken convincingly uh, in your first matchup. Yeah, we might have to head back down to that area of the state. You know, when they play Midland Valley, I mean, that's yeah. going to be a big-time matchup, probably going to decide that region there. But our pick em contest games this week presented by Hannah Engineering are Fort Dorchester 42-22 over Ashley Ridge. BHP defeats Powdersville 56-28. Blackfield Hilda over HKT 33 to 18. White Knoll blanks River Bluff 40 to nothing. And North Augusta over South Aiken 63 to 21. Perfect. Let's get a quick shout out to our friends of the program before we look at the statewide scores. Take your financial game to the next level with Founders Federal Credit Union. Reach your full potential. Relax. Join Founders today. Visit an office near you or relaxjoinfounders.com to apply. Federally insured by NCUA member qualification required. Carolina Orthopedic and Neurosurgical Associates, Kona, offers the most advanced training and experience in orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, sports medicine, and pain management in the upstate. Three convenient locations in Spartanburg, Duncan, and Greenville. Go to Kona.care to learn more. Come for the deals and stay for the quality with Folly Row. From polos to Q-zips to hats and more, their moisture wicking, quick drying, and anti-wrinkle apparel is the perfect blend of comfort and fashion for game day. FollyRow.com and at Folly Row on social media. Folly Row. Very good polos. Well, Drew, let's take a look now at the statewide scoreboard and all these scores across all the classes here in South Carolina. Perfect. Let's get started in 5A. We got Kane Bay knocking off Wando 55-7. to uh, Dorman defeats Bowling Springs 14-10. to um, I thought Bowling Springs had a real opportunity to win this game, Kevin. Yeah, that, that might lock up a playoff spot for Dorman. In all honesty, you know, that, that region, one guy gets left out. It's probably, probably going to be Bowling Springs now. They lost that ball game there. Uh, and that's a team that I, I I thought it improved. I think we all thought they were getting better. But they've had a couple of tough losses lately that surprised me. Uh, I guess they're still probably a year or two away. But big win for Coach Morris there in the Cavs. Most definitely. We got Blythewood knocking off Fort Mill 27 to 7. Goose Creek all over Berkeley 49 to 7. Didn't see that one coming either. Uh, Lexington over Chapin 22 to 15. Good bounce back for Lexington. They've had a rough few weeks. Uh, Clover blanks Nation 4 30 to nothing. Uh, we have Rock Hill all over Spring Valley 44 to 7. Conway picking up their first win of the season over St. James 27 to 22. West Ashley rolls stall 65 to nothing. Somerville continues, um, you know, their dream season. They beat Stratford 44 to 21. We got Sumter over Stockasty 36 to 6. T.L. Hanna all over Malden 62 to 7. And J.L. Mann over Woodmont 56 to 18. Moving on to 4A, AC Floor picks up a win over Westwood, 36-33. to That was a big comeback win, too. I know uh, Westwood had a big lead there, uh, but Coach Floyd's squad fought back. We were come with a big win. They had to have that one, really. I mean, they were kind of really trending the wrong direction. So that was a big win for the Falcons. We got Airport defeating Aiken, 14-12. to Coach Fid getting it done, his squad, in his first season. Um, Greenwood over Berea, 42-10. to Bluffton over Hilton Head Island, 28-14. to It's a good win for Bluffton. Hilton Head Island definitely going in the wrong direction. Um, we got South Point over Catawba Ridge, 31-3. to Catawba Ridge is just not the same team from last season. Uh, easily over Pickens, 63-21. to Eastside defeats Emerald, 35-12. to York over Indian Land, 28-20. to Irmo big over Richland Northeast, 63-8. to uh, James Island continues to roll. They beat Collison County 56 to nothing. Speaking of continuing to roll, Northwestern over Lancaster 59 to 6. Uh, seems like they can just pick their score every week, Evan. 
Got Greer over Lawrence, 49 to 7. Lucy Beckham over May River, 42 to 6. The Bengals are a team that, you know, has played, you know, silently played very good football all season. Uh, Ridgeview over Lugolf Elgin, 28 to 7. Uh, we got Wilson over North Myrtle Beach, 41 to 40 in a thriller. That might be a fight for a playoff spot as well. Uh, Riverside over Wade Hampton, 49 to 7. And the game of the night, Myrtle Beach over West Florence, 29 to 28. Go to social media if you have not already done so. Go find the picture of Myrtle Beach coming back to win this football game on a Hail Mary last play of the game. That's what football is all about, isn't it, Co? Unreal, man. You know, West had the lead for most of the night there. They have a 28-21 lead, you know, under a minute to go. They take a, a safety uh, on purpose there. Like at 28 23, they squib it. Myrtle Beach gets it to like 35 40 yard line. As time expires, Hail Mary to win the ball game, man. Unreal play. You know, I, you know, I guess if you're Coach Generette, you know, you think, hey, we did, we did what we're supposed to do. You know, we did the smart play to the safety. We, we kicked it. You know, maybe you try to try to kick it deeper next time. I don't know. But I mean, that's, you gave your team a chance. You just didn't knock the ball down there. And huge play by Myrtle Beach. Coach Wilson's squad never quit fighting. Big win for those guys. Uh, they they continue to roll after that week zero loss. Elation on one side, an absolute heartbreak on the other. Uh, like you said, Coach Interet squad, they'll they'll get it together. That's a that's a good football team. Obviously, not as good as they were last season. Uh, but that's you know Myrtle Beach. They've been heading in the right direction for for a while now, and that's a that's a big time win for them. Um, moving on to three A, we got Manning over Ainer, twenty eight twenty four. That one was closer than I expected it to be. Uh, Brooklyn Casey over O Dub, 56 to 13. Broom routes Travelers Rest, 46 to 7. Uh, Chapman all over Carolina, 57 to nothing. Clinton gets back, you know, and the, you know, gets some some good feelings. They just had a tough season with injuries. They beat Union County 51 to 28. Uh, Seneca all over Crescent, 41 to 14. Daniel Rolls Wahala, 52 to 10. We got Dylan over Loris, 33 to 14. Eastside defeats Emerald 35 to 12. Gilbert over Laura Richland 35 to 7. Uh, this was a tight one. Woodland beats Hanahan 31 to 28. I think Woodland had to come back in that football game too. Uh, heartbreak for Hanahan, but that was a good football game if you were down there to see it. Uh, Crestwood over Lake City 41 to nothing. Camden defeats Lake Wood 44 to nothing. Marlboro County over Darlington 20 to 14. That's a close. overtime ball game too. Yes, yes, it was. Uh, we got North Charleston over Battery Creek, thirteen to seven. Palmetto defeats Southside, forty-seven to nothing. Pendleton big over West Oak, sixty-one to nothing. I think we had a re- running clock in that football game. I think I saw something where West Oak had like twenty-four yards of offense at the half. Drear over Swansea, fifty-one to seven. Uh, Waccamaw defeats Georgetown, twenty-four fourteen. Got an, a cool note on that one coming up later in the show. Chester over Woodruff, 44 to 6, and Wren defeats Fountain Inn, 48 to 7. Down in 2A, we got Strom over Batesburg, Leesville, 44 to 14. 96 defeats Blacksburg, 33 to 20. Central over Beaufort, 33 to 24. AJ defeats Shiraw, 21 to 17. Uh, North Central over Chesterfield, 52 to 28. Newberry over Eau Claire, 56 to nothing. Barnwell defeats Edisto, 42 to 6. Uh, Fairfield Central over Mid Carolina, forty-one nothing. Gray Collegiate defeats Portal out of Georgia, fifty-six to thirty-five. I think Gray picks up two wins this weekend. We got Oceanside over Lake Marion. We already talked about that one earlier. Abbeville over Liberty, forty to three. Marion defeats Andrews, forty-two to thirty-two. Uh, Pillion falls to Saluda, forty-two to thirteen. Hampton County over Ridgeland Hardyville, 50 to 13. Silver Bluff over Fox Creek, 37 0. And Timberland over Bishop England, 35 to 13. Kev, before I leave 2A, um, that Landrum Chesney game was canceled. Want to send thoughts and prayers out to the Chesney community. Um, they had some a tragic event happen, lost some students in a in a car crash on Friday. And we just want to, you know, send our, our thoughts and prayers to them and that community. That is a tough look for them. Uh just wanted to know that we were thinking about them. But moving on to 1A, we've got Bamberg defeating Ben Lippin, 43 to 27. That was a tight one uh, up until the end of the game. Will Branch over Bethune Bowman 50 to 6. Uh Allendale Fairfax over I don't have that score, actually. 
We got Louisville over CA Johnson, 35 to 6. Johnsonville over Carver's Bay, 18 to 12. Southside Christian defeats Dixie, 35 to 7. East Clarendon over Hemingway, 49 to nothing. Lakeview over Green Sea, 58 to 16. McCormick defeats Ware Shoals, 20 to 8. Military Magnet over Burke, 28 15. Denmark Olar over RSM, 64 to 18. Cross over St. John's, 56 to nothing. St. Joe's over Calhoun Falls, 56 to 8. Wagner Sally over Wilson Elko, 52 to 6. And Whitmire defeats Great Falls, 61 to 28. Let's take a look at our skis of slate for the week. Uh, I've got Florence Christian over Hilton Head Prep, 45 to 13. First Baptist over Hilton, or excuse me, Hilton Head Christian defeats First Baptist, 56 to 6. Orangeburg Prep falling to Bethesda Academy, 32 to 12. Greenwood Christian falling to Colleton Prep, 32 to 14. Clarendon Hall defeats Calhoun Academy, 20 to 19. Faith Christian over Lawrence Academy, 22 to 6. Uh, Lee Academy falls to Williamsburg, 47 to 7. Holly Hill defeating Andrew Jackson, 60 to 28. Uh, Pinewood Prep all over PD Academy, 63 to 14. Wilson Hall over Northwood, 62 to 20. Cardinal Newman defeats John Paul II, 49 to nothing. Jefferson Davis Academy defeats Holy Trinity, 40 to 8. We got Porter Gowd over Trinity Collegiate, 58 to 30. Uh, Wardlaw Academy over Oak Brook Prep, 52 to 42. Thomas Hayward over Dylan Christian, 49 to 16. Spartanburg Christian over Carolina Academy, 33 to 32. That's the only scores that I have for Skiza. Perfect. Got a couple notes here I want to run through, Drill, before we look at the next segment of the program. You mentioned this Walker Mall team earlier. They have defeated Andrews, Carver's Bay, and Georgetown in the same season, I believe, for the first time ever. Super impressive uh, for the Warriors there. And another fun note here, you mentioned that Marion Andrews ball game there. In that ball game, we did not see an incomplete pass. Brandon Cumby for Andrews went four for four. Gabe Cusack for Marion went eight for eight. So the ball did not hit the ground. Uh, so that's pretty cool there uh, between the Swamp Foxes and, and those boys getting after it. But all the, all the notes I've got there, Drill. let's look now at our stock up, stock down segment. A couple guys I've got for stock up that looked impressive this week. We've got Philip Simmons, the big win over Buford there. South Lawrence, the big win over Hartsville. And then Blackfield Hilda, that big, big win over previously unbeaten HKT. A couple I got. Lamar, a uh, big win over Latta. That's a big one. Uh, White Knoll, they set their region you know, championship you know, hopes high in blanking River Bluff. And Whitmire, man, big win over Great Falls. I think they won that game 61-8. to eight. I've got Burns. We talked about that, the big defensive performance there. Big win over Spartanburg. Porter Gowd, nice one over Trinity. And then Westside uh, holding Greenville to 14 in that big victory. I got Lucy Beckham, and the Bengals continue to impress this season. They've played really good fo football. If you want to see the scoreboard lit up, go see Pendleton. Those guys really get it done on the offensive side. And Camden, man, they've kind of been on a roller coaster this season, but they've really righted the ship over the last few weeks. Last couple I've got, I've got North Augusta. They continue to roll. Big win over South Aiken. And then Bamberg Earhart. I know it's a skis of school. Ben Lippin's a good program there. Bamberg getting it done at the right time. Uh, big win for Coach Crosby squad. I got two more. Will Branch, just, they've played really good football this season. And Wacomal, that's a cool note they had. You know, winning those games, I'm sure that's important for those guys. Uh, that's big for that program, and that's exciting to see. And then on the flip side, the stock down this week. We've got Bowling Springs, a team that, like, like I mentioned earlier, we were all high on, thought they were improving. I think they are better, but maybe not quite as good as we thought. That's been a couple tough losses now in a row, including that big one to Dorman last week. Chapin, a team that was white hot going into the ballgame against Lexington. Losing that one's kind of kind of a surprise to me. And then River Bluff, just getting blanked by White Knoll. Tough loss there in region play. My three this week, man, I got Buford. Uh, no shame in losing to Phillip Simmons, but it's just the way that they lost that football game. Expected that to be really competitive, and it was not at all. Hartsville, man, I know a lot of their season has been with injuries, um, but unless they stay healthy, I don't see them being able to compete, you know, especially in that difficult region that they play in. Um, and then Greenville High, man, they have, you know, like I said, they had a difficult region schedule. Uh, but, you know, getting really dominated by Westside, and especially like offensively, not being able to score against Westside, who's given up points, you know, to all the teams they face this year, having two weeks to prepare. Uh, the Red Raiders, man, they've really got some some things to figure out over the next few weeks. 
That is our stock up, stock down there for week six. So let's look now at our players of the week brought to you by the George Agency. As always, lots of great performers across the state of South Carolina. Appreciate you guys sending us those and continue to do so. You can shoot it to us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. We'd love to get those stats from you guys and kind of give these guys a shout out for the week. It's always a tough, tough decision, but this week we've got three great ones drill. We've got Jaquel Holman out of Blackville Hilda. He rushes 27 times for 287, two touchdowns. And I believe one of those touchdowns may, may have been a 97 yarder there for Jaquel. So big game for him at Blackfield Hilda. We've got Kayshawn Shumpert at Whitmire, 10 carries, 213, five touchdowns, and four two point conversions, 21.3 average. That's pretty impressive there for Kayshawn Shumpert. And then James Oates at Burns. We mentioned that Rebels' big performance on the performance on that side of the ball he goes for 12 tackles a sack and a 78 yard pick six big game for james that's for burns there once again our three players of the week brought to you by the george agency we've got jaquel holman at blackville hilda Kayshawn shumpert at whitmire and james oates at burns drill who are some other guys uh, who had big weeks we're going to give a shout out to here on the program most definitely, we're going to give a shout-out to Drew Spires and Richard Wynn. Three carries for 104 yards and a touchdown. I don't even know how that's possible. Also had a one two-point conversion, 13-and-a-half tackles, a sack, two picks, including a 92-yard pick six. Drew gets it done every single week. Uh, staying in skis, man, Jules Huntley, this kid is a stud at Florence Christian, had 19 carries for 296 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, moving on, Jaden Cummings at Somerville goes 13 of 17 for 325 yards and four touchdowns. Um, Ian Grissom, surprise, surprise, at Louisville goes 14 for 22 for 248 yards, three touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. Cannot believe that Louisville gave up, uh, you know, some points this week. They gave up six, man. They got to really get it together on that defense. Got Aiden Mosley at AC Floor, had 227 rushing yards and three touchdowns. Edward Robinson, man, this kid is an absolute stud at Blythewood, had five sacks. This kid had 25 sacks last year. We got to do some numbers to see how many he's got this season. Jay Stoker at Easley goes 11 for 15 for 266 yards, four touchdowns, also had four rushes for 63 yards and another touchdown. Ryan Campbell at Fort Dorchester goes for 15 carries, 191 yards, and three touchdowns. Owen Bays of Bluffton, four touchdown passes. And Caden Crawford at Clinton set a school record in receiving yards with seven catches, 191 yards, and a touchdown. Love giving these guys shout outs. Please give us some more noms for next week. Looking forward to doing it again um, when we get back with you guys. Yeah, definitely keep shooting those to us. Like I said, Twitter, Facebook, email, whatever, Instagram. Keep passing them our way at Moving Chains. There. Once again, our three players of the week brought to the Georgia Agency. We've got Jaquel Holman at Blackfield Hilda, Kayshawn Shumpert at Whitmire, and James Oates at Burns. Appreciate the Georgia Agency and those guys. Uh, you know, open enrollment's coming up. Definitely hit them up. If you need insurance for yourself or for your small business, but drill, let's give a shout out, shout out to the friends of the program again before we get into our final segment. Take your financial game to the next level with Founders Federal Credit Union. Reach your full potential. Relax. Join Founders today. Visit an office near you or relaxjoinfounders.com to apply. Federally insured by NCUA member qualification required. The George Agency has been serving the insurance needs of South Carolina for over 40 years. They're a full-line insurance agency concentrated in employee benefits and health insurance with an office in Mullins and Merle's Inlet, but they can help you all across the state. They have clients in Greer, Rock Hill, Columbia, and more, so wherever you are, they can help. Give Bradley, Wayne, Richard, and the crew a call or check them out online at thegeorgeagency.net. That's thegeorgeagency.net. Come for the deals and stay for the quality with Folly Row. From polos to Q-zips to hats and more, their moisture wicking, quick drying, and anti-wrinkle apparel is the perfect blend of comfort and fashion for game day. Follyrow.com and at Folly Row on social media. Folly Row. Very good polos. Drill, as always, one of my favorite segments we do now is the Folly Row question to wrap up the show here. This week we've got a fun one. Who is your surprise team or teams so far here in the 2023 campaign? So I actually went teams but for different reasons, uh, I went good and bad. Uh, so for good surprise, I went with Midland Valley. And these guys have played outstanding this season. We got to see them against Silver Bluff. That's really the game that put them on the map this year. They've been they've been so good. They're 6-0 and on the year. I mean, I think they had their, their bye week this past week to get ready for region play where they'll face off a really good airport team and kick that off. I think they've got a legitimate shot to win that region. 
Got a big time matchup to end the season against North Augusta. I think that's probably going to be for the region championship. I think it's pretty safe to say. Uh, but I mean, these guys are are good in all phases of the of the game. They're good up front on both lines. Um, I think they've only given up 93 points this season um, against some some pretty good competition. You know, they've beat Strom Thurmond, they beat Silver Bluff, uh, beat a, a good Westwood team. I mean, this is a very good football team. Really excited to see what Coach Chapman and those guys are getting done there. Obviously, got Trayvon Dunbar. Uh, just got some really studs. So that's been a great surprise. Then on the bad side, Greenville Red Raiders. Man, they're one of the hottest teams. You know, in the off season. And just really have not lived up to those expectations. Uh, we do know they played a difficult non-region, you know, schedule. Um, but you know, some of these games were just non-competitive. As you know, they had the big win a couple weeks at Jail Man. Kind of thought they were ready, and then kind of face planted against Westside. You know, basically for the region championship at home. This is a game where they scored seventy points last year, only put up fourteen, coming off a bye. Not really sure what to make of the Red Raiders at this point because I really thought they were going to be a state championship contender, and and I no longer feel that way about them. But, Kevin, who is your surprise team, teams of this season so far? I had a couple I was looking at. Uh, you know, Blackfield Hilda is one. They've been really impressive, impressive in the 1A ranks. A 2A team I like has been Saluda. You know, they've been kind of – they lost a ton of pieces there. But they've been really good so far this year. But the team I want to go with is probably my biggest surprise here, and, and it's, it's a good thing. And that's Irmo, the Yellow Jackets. You know, we we knew they had some squ- some some guys, some players there, but they have been dominant in their six wins so far. Three hundred points for only forty four against. I mean, they are just blowing teams out. Jaden Allen Hendricks, AJ Brand, Donovan Murph. You know, Coach Brand has got those guys playing great football. The Irmo Yellow Jackets are probably my surprise so far this season. And how important, you know, Jaden Allen Hendricks coming over from Gilbert, you know, like we knew he was good, but like how good he's been for that offense. Uh, but the most surprising thing for Irmo for me, man, is that defense. I didn't realize they've only given up 44 points on the Steven. Been a, a, extremely impressive. Uh, but we love our friends at Folly Row for, for sponsoring that segment. Please go hit up their website. Go get some merch. Uh, these guys are awesome. It's a South Carolina company. You know, like you said, game day apparel, Q zips, got the polos, uh, just awesome stuff. I, I wore my stuff to the game last week. Uh, really appreciate Folly Road jumping on board with us this year. I was at a golf trip this weekend. I wore a Folly Row shirt two out of the three days, man. You know, it, it, it can't make you play better golf, but it can make you feel better while you're playing golf. So you got that going for go. you, man. And, and they're very fashionable. They look good. They feel good. Uh, you know, you know, little Deion Sanders, you know, look, look good, feel good, feel good, play good, play good, they pay good, all that jazz. Uh, so definitely get some Folly Row shirts, man. They are, they are really, really nice there. But Jarrell, this has been a, another fun week as always. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, et cetera, at Moving Chains, M O V I N C H A I N S, website, movingchains.com, podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. We do our weekly recap show, comes out on Sundays on those podcast platforms. We do a live preview show tuesday nights about seven o'clock on facebook live and youtube live check us out there those are a lot of fun maybe the most fun things we do we get to interact with you guys in live time it's really cool stuff we tune in for that we do our twitter slash x uh spaces scoreboard show on friday nights about 10 30 11 and we get just roll through the scores from across the state we have some people hop in who are at ball games or whatever so it's a lot of fun to hear that and we got some really good interviews lined up for you guys too. Some good coaches and players coming down the pipes. So definitely tune in for all that. But Jarrell, like we mentioned, you know, region play is pretty much all underway now. Uh, a, a, a lot of surprises this early week. This first week, I would say, I would say probably some region titles already kind of decided. Uh, obviously, not officially, but we saw the two best teams play in. But um, a, a lot of fun in week six. Yeah, for sure. Like I've been so focused on week six, man. I haven't even looked at week seven. So I'm excited on Tuesday to kind of turn the page and see what you and John talk about. So be sure to, to tune into that. But yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. Some crazy games, some unexpected things. Like I said earlier, changing of the guard in some aspects with some of these regions and, you know, moving and shaking like this is the important time of the season. Uh, but from a moving the chains, you know, thing we talked about our friends at Folly Row and their merch. 
go grab some moving the chains merch as well uh be sure to do that support the boys support the brand uh it helps us travel these games like we did this past week hitting up three different games uh but be sure to to hit up our website um hit up that email address uh, so you can grab some merch we got some really cool stuff for you guys it's the stuff that we wear on the sidelines not that we're cool or fashionable uh but you can probably make it look cool so go check that out it really helps us out so we would appreciate if you did that yeah, we've got pictures posted on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram pages coming to our website soon enough as well. So definitely check that out. We've got hoodies. We've got lots of different hat styles. We've got some toboggans as well for when it gets cold here pretty quickly. So definitely check all that stuff out. You can also email mtcgear.sc at gmail.com. That's mtcgear.sc at gmail.com to look at our hoodies, hats, toboggans, and more. We'd love to have you guys support it and, and support the brand, man. It, it's crazy drill how many folks uh, I've gotten to talk to the last couple of weeks, like who just, you know, love high school football. I ran into a guy today at a random Zaxby's in Newberry, South Carolina, <laughs> talking about uh Saluda and Newberry and Strom, man. It was great to do. So definitely yeah. uh, get some merch, man, support the boys and, you know, meet some friends that way too. I'm sure you'll see some other folks who are wearing it get to, get to make some friends like that, but definitely check us out and looking forward to another big week. But for Jarrell Hendricks, I'm Kevin Thomas. Moving the Change is always brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. This has been our week six. Follow your recap show, and we'll catch you guys soon.